featuring the Oregon Ducks. Brought to you in part by Taylor Electric. Mashovsky Enterprises. Heimer Oswald Volvo. Bymark. Cellular One. The Oregon Club of Portland. Rich Brooks Show. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKinnon, along with the coach, and welcome to the show as we kick off the 1991 football season. And you can tell we've been doing this for quite a few years, but we have a few changes in store this year for you. And obviously, from the audio portion, you can tell we've got a live, or at least for the most part, live studio audience here to watch the taping of the show. And we're here at the Stadium Club overlooking Otson Stadium. We expect a very exciting year, and hopefully, somewhere along the line, you might be able to come out and watch the taping of the show. Well, Coach, you got off to a great start. No better way to start a season than a victory. Plus, it is a conference victory as Autzen Stadium opens up its 25th season. Well, it is nice, Todd. Uh, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, particularly on the offensive side. And even with the Washington State's fine skill people, uh, I, I thought our defense was going to be severely tested. In that first quarter, uh, I had a lot of things going through my mind. Uh, we finally woke up and Dominated the line of scrimmage. I thought that was the key to the game and uh, made the plays that were necessary to, to get a comfortable victory in the end. It wasn't very comfortable in the first half. We uh, talked uh, last week uh, about the fact that uh, Danny O'Neill, a redshirt freshman, hadn't taken a snap in a football game in two years, certainly not in a Division I game. And you said the key was the people around Danny O'Neill are going to have to help him out, and certainly that was the case yesterday. Well, I, I think our offensive line played extremely well. Uh, Danny was not sacked. Uh, he did scramble uh, several times. I think he ran for about 50 yards. Uh, uh, but even the times that he scrambled, the pass protection was fine. After uh, reviewing the film this morning, uh, he, he just had a little happy feet. And he, you know, he didn't have a lot of confidence in his pass protection because he'd been going against our defense most of the uh, fall camp. And he'd been hammered in there pretty good. So uh, I think he really settled into it as the game wore on. And, and obviously, the other people did do their job. They blocked well. Uh, for the most part, we caught the ball well, we ran hard, uh, and uh, the defense made it pretty easy, too, as they scored a touchdown and set up another very easy one. You know, defense, so you, you break that down, you had a good pass, uh, pass rush, but also I thought your coverage by your corners and your defensive backs was very good for the most part, and as a result, uh, when Bledsoe went back to pass, he couldn't necessarily find his initial receiver. Well, I think he had a, a, a tough assignment most of the day. Uh, Muhammad Oliver, uh, uh, didn't show up in a lot of the stats uh, with uh, too many interceptions and that type of thing, but uh, he looked like he was wearing a glove on, on, on the Washington State receivers. I thought uh, Smith played well. Herman O'Berry for a redshirt freshman had a tremendous football game. Ernest Jones for a, for a young sophomore had a great football game, and he was, he was involved in coverage just as much as he was in rushing, and he, he, he did get a sack. Uh, and, of course, Eric Castle. I mean, what a football player. I mean, I, I just I looked at the film again this morning, and I throw out the interceptions. He played a great football game, even without the interceptions. He's a heck of a football player. The kicking game, I know McCallum, it was disappointing to see him miss the point after. And Tommy Thompson, a slow start, but he came back with a couple of 40-plus yarders. I was extremely disappointed in our kicking game. Uh, Tommy Thompson had a very average day, actually had a bad day, punting the football. He. Uh, was not very good kicking off at where he had been in, in fall camp. He'd been kicking him into the end zone all day long. Uh, we didn't do very well on that end. And, and Greg, uh, uh, one PAT away from a school record, uh, just kind of pushed it out to the right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel badly for Greg, but uh, as I told him when he came off well, I said, now that's off your back. You don't have to worry about having a perfect streak anymore, so just settle down and kick, and he did a great job the rest of the game. He's not the only one to miss extra points so far in this young college football season, and it does change the, the course of the football game. Washington State blessed with skilled position talent. Drew Bledsoe, a sophomore quarterback, started five games last year for the Cougars, big and very strong. C.J. Davis, one of his primary receivers. The tight end, a good one. Last year's first-team All-Pac-10 selection, 
Butch Williams. He's a good one, but the Dutch did a very nice job on him yesterday. Jason Hansen, maybe the premier kicker slash punter in the country, certainly has a outstanding professional future ahead of him. As far as the Ducks, well, that offense has got to be stopped by a good defense. Marcus Woods, second team all Pac-10 nose guard in the middle. Redshirt freshman Danny O'Neill getting the start at quarterback. We get right into the first quarter. The Ducks elected to defer their decision until the second half. We'll kick off to start the football game with a little bit of a breeze at their back. And not a great kick uh, down to about the seven yard line. And we actually have our coverage split here. Not very good coverage, but Muhammad Oliver saves the day with a nice tackle. He's one of the two safeties on that kickoff coverage unit. Bledsoe goes back to throw and Muhammad Oliver again comes into play here with great coverage. Third down and 15 for the Cougars at their own 29. They just could not run the football. Matt Labonte making the stop. The Cougars forced to punt. So the Ducks take it over. First possession of the season. Danny O'Neill at quarterback. And right away to the air. First play, we try to bring him out. He throws it a little quick. Uh, actually, I think uh, Anthony Jones slipped a little bit too, but uh, incomplete. Now we run a little play up the middle. Only gain a couple of yards. And Danny throws incomplete on uh, third down. And... Uh, we punt the ball. Not a very great start for the young quarterback. Uh, threw that one in the dirt under pressure. Uh, he did have somebody in his face on that one. So the Cougars take over first and 10 at their own 43. Bledsoe to a Bobo as he scrambles from the pocket, a gain of 23. Our linebackers came out of the zone coverage as Bledsoe started to scramble, which opened up Bobo. Uh, uh, and Bledsoe did a good job finding him as he was being tackled and released the ball. A planned scramble play here by Bledsoe. Good pressure by Farwell. Uh, makes Bledsoe throw it incomplete. So fourth down and 12. As the Cougars disdain a field goal attempt. And Bledsoe, a big play here, gets just enough for the first down. And then on first and 10 from the Oregon 22, Bledsoe, the pass, and he finds C.J. Davis down the seam here for the touchdown. And with a point after by Hanson, the Cougars score 57 yards, five plays. Pretty quick. Uh, we broke down in the secondary coverage on that play. Uh, we couldn't do much with the football uh, when we got it, and uh, Washington State runs it up in there, and they couldn't do much in the running game the whole day long. Nice play there by Joe Farwell on the trap. Get some help from Doug Douglas. Third down and 11. Good play by Daryl Smith, the right side corner, coming up and breaking up this pass. Good job. That bounced up in the air and almost uh, landed in our hands and another Washington State receiver's hands. And Hanson uh, just lived up to his reputation all day long, Todd. He punted the ball not only high, but long. Uh, there's a clip that nullified a great return here by Brian Brown. I'm not sure he would have got the return had it been for the clip, though. So it was an excellent call by the officials. And you can see what Brian Brown can do in the open field, too. This kind of got your team going, I thought. After two ineffective offensive series, Sean Burwell busts it for 38. And so then. Another key play here on third and eight. And Danny O'Neill, maybe this got him going because uh, he seemed to settle down. Well, he did. And a, and a big play. It picked up the first down. You can see on the replay here, it opens up. He's got great protection. Can't find anybody open. And then pulls the ball down to run. And uh, actually, look at he tucked the ball away even. Uh, we had a little problem with that in fall camp. And he also got a bloody nose on that play. Welcome to college football. Nice pass here to Ronnie Harris. Ronnie Harris breaks it up down deep for a first down but we get called for a clip. Uh, so we had to overcome a, a clip on the uh, punt on this drive as well as a clip on a nice play here. And then here's the touchdown pass to Anthony Jones. Real nice catch by Anthony Jones and great protection. Unfortunately, on the point after Greg McCallum, with an opportunity to tie the school record for consecutive points after misses as we uh, pick up the, the tape and the string ends and you're still down seven to six. So what, what happened here, just push it? He just pushed it to the right. It was a good snap and good hold, and uh, he missed it. And uh, I just think that uh, Greg maybe might have been thinking about it a little bit because uh, that kick would have tied him for the school record 74 consecutive. And I just told him after that, don't worry about it. Now it's over. Uh, just make the rest of it. Now your defense, as the game progressed, seemed to kind of get in tune with what Washington State wanted to do and really shuts them down the rest of the way. Well, they did a good job. And here again, O'Neill scrambles. But this time, instead of running it, he uh, had the presence to look downfield and saw Jeff Thomason break free and complete the pass. You can see good protection again, excellent protection. No need for him to start running. Uh, but he does, and he finds Jeff Thomason open. Uh, and Danny O'Neill's mobility will add something to our offense. Uh, uh, 
Uh, we have a lot of things to work on yet, but uh, look at the line surge there, Bob. Do I love that. So at the end of the first quarter, the Ducks trailing 7-6, to six, but as we've been in the second quarter of play, the Ducks have the football and are mounting a drive that eventually will lead to the go-ahead score. Play action pass here. O'Neal uh, scrambles out to his right and pulls it down uh, for another fine run and a first down. Uh, I think you'll see later on, if we do have the particular play on, that he's learning a little something as the game goes along, too, because uh, later in the game when he started to scramble just before he got tackled, he'd duck under a few of these. But uh, it took a bloody nose and almost a broken nose to convince him that that was the, the wiser thing to do. Uh, Juan Shedrick, strong running here. Uh, excellent uh, trap play, but they blitzed into it. The, you can see on the replay here, there's just a big pile in there at Washington State Blitz. But look at the line surge again. We just caved in the whole side of the Washington State line, and Shedrick just kind of came out of there stumbling and found out he was in the open and ran over the first guy that he saw. Great block by Jeff Thomason on this play. Now with a missed point there for the first time, you go for two to try to get back up by seven. That's uh, right, and uh, Danny's got to learn that uh, you can't do this anymore because in high school, you know, you can throw two-point conversion or anything, but they can get that ball and run it all the way back. Twice then on the pass. Yes. The uh... I don't think you'll see it again. <laughs> <laughs> nice play by Muhammad Oliver. Uh, uh, great pressure here on Bledsoe. And a nice play by Herman O'Berry, the redshirt freshman from Highlands High School in Sacramento. Do you keep track of hurries, a statistical category? Oh, certainly. Our defensive coaches keep track of everything. And Herman O'Berry again. Uh, this young man is going to be a great football player. And you can see the crowd appreciates the job the defense has just done. The offense comes in. The one major mistake Danny made the, in the game on Saturday, this one just floats up in the air picked off by Washington State. And you thought this defensively was a very critical series. I think this was the turning point. And I just might add, that wasn't a mistake. That was what I'd call ugly. <laughs> uh, Danny didn't even have to scramble. He had great protection. Nice play by the defense. But the fact that it's 12 to 7, they just get the turnover in our territory. Uh, key play there. That was very close. Whether he had his foot in or not, uh, the official was right on the play and judged him to be out of bounds. But the defense stopping Washington State from scoring in that possession, I think, was a very good confidence builder for us. And there, Danny O'Neill. You see him duck under that guy that time? After getting his nose hit twice, he thought that was probably a wise thing to do. Busted uh, play here. Burwell goes the wrong way, and Danny O'Neill just pulls it down alertly and runs for the first down. Later on in the drive, third and five, the pass is deflected and knocked down. We've got about three minutes to play in the first half. The Ducks leading Washington State 12-7. The Cougars with a football and trying to regain the lead. Excellent pressure there. Ernest Jones, Andy Connor. Uh, excellent pass rush. You can see on the replay, Bledsoe's looking for somebody to throw to, but there's nobody there. Matt Labounty comes in, gets to him, I think, first with Ernest Jones. Uh, excellent pressure, but that was a what, what we call a coverage sack. And this... Boy, Matt Labounty had him. <laughs> He's, Matt just can't believe that the, he got the pass off. Excellent pass rush here. You can see good effort there by Andy Connor. Cummings gets knocked by Bledsoe. Bledsoe's running for his life and just throws it up for grabs. And unfortunately, we don't get it. And poor Matt Labounty gets denied of uh, yet another quarterback sack to add to his all-time school record. Great job on the screen pass here. Danny rolls to his left, throws back to Burwell, going the other way, and we pick up a first down. We're trying to really get in, in field goal range on this. We run the draw play there, and uh, on third and fourth down, we go for it. Uh, we go deep on third down. It's third and about four. It's incomplete, and, and again, I think Danny was a, a little hurried on this play. It's fourth down. All we need is four yards, and he throws it much too quick with no pressure. Uh, Anthony was not open. He should have a little more time and see to, to see if he could get in a position to get the first down. Romeo Bannison finishes the half with just a great sack after one that he had gotten on the play before was nullified by a penalty. You can see Romeo just break through. I don't I don't blame Bledsoe for running. Uh, Bannison 6'5", 275 and runs a 4'7". The Ducks are leading the Washington State Cougars 12 to 7 at the half as we pick things up in the third quarter. The Ducks had the football but unable to move it so the Cougars have possession when we pick up the activity. 
And Eric Castle almost picked that one off right there. Uh, again, a nice job by our defensive line, just stuffing Washington State's running game at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Woods uh, uh, does a great job. Uh, good pressure here, and Eric Castle steps in front, takes a nice run back, tries to cut back there, doesn't quite get it. So now you're in great uh, position, but after a penalty, you were backed up. This is a third and goal. Neal keeps it for his first career touchdown. Now the Ducks have extended the lead. You go for two. Huge hole for Sean Burwell. Well, this is a trap play, and uh, we blocked it extremely well. And it was a key, key play for us because we had fallen behind with the extra point. You can see the good block there by Todd Gettison on the middle backer uh, that sprung uh, Burwell into the end zone. So with the two-point conversion, the Ducks now up by 13. It's 20 to 7 as we are early in the third quarter. Talk about some hitting. Excellent job. Tony Coker, redshirt freshman from Lebanon High School, delivered a punch. Obi Babs got in on it as well. Try to run the counter play again. Joe Farwell must have been in the huddle because he was there just about the time he got watching. Watch Farwell appear here into the backfield right there. Excellent job on the tackle by Farwell. So that sets up a second down, 11 for the Cougars. and. This maybe is the backbreaker as far as this game is concerned. Bledsoe under pressure. Eric Castle picks it off and dances into the end zone for 39 yards and the touchdown. Great job. Great job. Again, you go for two and another one of those ones that can be returned if it would be intercepted. Not a good play. We'll work on that. Danny will get a better understanding of what we want to do. And uh, when it's not there on a two-point conversion, just throw it up in the stands. Suddenly now, and even though Washington State has a potent offense you've got a little breathing room and does that change your defensive uh, philosophy at all from here on out uh, a little bit nice hit there by Chad Coda also a red shirt freshman from Ashland High School down in southern Oregon uh, great sack by Romeo Bannison he came through two or three linemen you can see on the replay here he's just going to reach out good pressure around the ups forces uh, Bledsoe to step up and he just grabs him with a strong left arm and just yanks him down uh, he, uh, he was a real force in this game, and I, it's going to be hard to keep him out of the starting lineup. I was going to say, he doesn't even start for you. And third and 900 miles, and they pick it up on us. I mean, there's not only a few quarterbacks in the country that can roll clear to one side of the field and throw it way back across for the first down. Ernest Jones. You had an opportunity to play a lot of people on defense, too. It seemed to keep your uh, troops fresh. Well, we did, and uh, that, I think, will help us as the season progresses as well. Great play again by Eric Castle. Boy, did he have a second half. He really did. He had a great third quarter. Played a se had a season's worth of highlights in one quarter. What is intentional grounding? Well, this was not called intentional grounding. It was an illegal touching of the ball. The ball, when he threw it, actually hit one of his linemen in the uh, fanny. I'll clean that up. I'll say the <laughs> rear end. And uh, they called it illegal touching because he's not an eligible receiver. They pick up a, a nice catch here uh, by Bobo for the first down, and he touched his knee down, and they blew the whistle. And a great interception by Daryl Smith, very similar to a couple he made against mm -hmm. Ty Detmer in, in the BYU game a year ago. So the interception, we'll look at it from the ground level. I'm going to have to talk to Daryl. It seems like most of his interceptions, he just jumps up, catches, and falls down, you know. No wasted energy. No, he, we need some return yards. <laughs> Well, he made a good play, and now this is a great drive here, Coach. It's just what you want, a long, sustained drive. Little screen pass to Juan Shedrick, uh, uh, and the only thing that was close on this was picking up the first down, uh, which we did on the uh, play after that, and now we come out, a little play-action fake, and Anthony Jones, nice catch. But Jones with a nice reception. He led the Ducks in receiving. Look at that run. He ran hard he yesterday. He ran very hard. Just ran right over that Washington State defensive back and a great cut here and a nice run and <laughs> not real happy he didn't get in the end zone on this I don't think he was a little upset 41 at, yard gain look at the, the the point of attack again nice job by Brandon Jumper on a kick out block excellent job uh, by Jeff Thomason we've got Steve Harden in there a red shirt freshman from up in Snohomish Washington I think Heath Howington is also in on, on at guard uh, from Roseburg. The line, even our second line, really did a great job of uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. A little play fake here, and now that's what you call open. You bet. Into the fourth quarter we go. The Ducks uh, leading Washington State 33 to seven. 
A little bit later on in the program, we'll uh, hear from our live studio audience. But first, we want to complete things up here. And your defense really completed the job. Well, I'll tell you, I bet Bledsoe's in the training room this morning checking a lot of bruises. Romeo Bannison just delivered a heck of a blow to him there, pressured him right there. Excellent coverage by Ernest Jones on, on Butch Williams, their very fine tight end, uh, breaking up that pass. And again, he gets uh, swallowed by a sea of green jerseys as he goes back to pass. You can see uh, here on the replay, Jeff Cummings comes around the corner, forces Bledsoe to step up, gets to him first, then he's hit by Bandison and also Matt Labounty. So a big loss. The Ducks get it back, unable to move it. The Cougars uh, once again regain possession. David Massey, who was uh, questionable this week with an Achilles injury, with a sack. He got there with a sack, and uh, I think uh, the referee was feeling a little bit of compassion, and he blew the whistle before they could actually get him to the ground. That's good judgment, I think, on the official's part. Uh, Romeo Bannison, again, uh, I'm sure uh, Bledsoe was wondering who that 97 was. He thought he was on his own team. He was in the backfield so much. Almost a great interception here by Muhammad Oliver. He had the ball. His foot was on the ground. But as he came down and hit the turf, the ball came loose. Joe Farwell, great pressure again. Bannison almost gets an interception. He was very close to about five sacks and an interception. I got to talk day. to Coach Sheffield. We don't work on enough ball drills for those guys. <laughs> check his hands out. Uh, Kyle Croston comes in the game here and hits Brian Brown on a crossing pattern on third down and a big 36-yard uh, game. Looks like he's uh, running like a fullback. Well, I'll tell you, Brian uh, isn't the swiftest, but uh, he's a tough runner and. Uh, there was just a blown coverage here in Washington State secondary. They were in man-to-man, -man, and the, the man that was covering him uh, decided not to follow him. And uh, Kyle picked it up and threw it right across. And you can see Brian did everything he could to get every yard out of that run. You've got your second team uh, reserves in there on offense, and I'm sure this has to add to their confidence putting the ball in the end zone. It was. And that it was a great catch by Brian Brown. Ball was thrown low and a little bit behind him, and he went down and got it. Excellent block there by Dwayne Jones. and. Robert K. Ali'i Clifford, uh, second effort, spun it into the end zone. Take a look at it down low. We've got Harden and Howington in there. Uh, also, Willie Tate at uh, tight end. Uh, excellent job opening up the hole and a good second effort spin in there to into the end zone. So Clifford gets his first career touchdown. Callum in with the point after, and it is 40 to 7. Now, the Cougars got one touchdown with about seven seconds to play, and then the final play that we will see in the ball game, I want you to talk about this young man, Donovan Moore. Well, Donovan Moore is a transfer uh, to us from a four-year school, Division III, uh, Dubuque, and he will, uh, I think, play a lot of football for us this year. You can see a 57-yard kickoff return. Donovan Moore caps things off with the Ducks with that long kickoff return, and that was the final play of the game as the Ducks defeat Washington State 42-14. Let's take a look at some of the final statistics. First of all, the team stats. You see the big stat there, rushing yardage. And you love to see that, Coach. You knew you had to run the football coming in, and you were successful. And uh, 283 to 44, and uh, the Cougars just couldn't do anything on the ground. Passing, Danny O'Neill had a pretty good day. We'll look at his stats in a minute. Total offense, and I want you to look at 306 for Washington State. That's a great job against that offense, because over the years, they're normally racking up 400, 500, 600 against teams. Well, they certainly have against us in recent <laughs> years, so I, I was pleased with it. All right, let's flip the page, look at some of the other key stats. The Cougars hurt themselves in the penalty department. Uh, Coach, I know you would want to get a little less than six. In uh, opening games in recent years, you've been very good in that area. I think the most we've had in the last two or three years is four penalties, and I'm not happy at all with six. Third down conversions, that's a tribute to your offense. Uh, and Danny O'Neill making some clutch plays and sacks, six of them, 41 yards. Jones and Bannison each had two sacks individually. Individual stats, Danny O'Neill. Pretty good day, all in all. You see he had 10 of 23 for 129 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. He also ran for a touchdown. And Sean Burwell, a career-high 189 yards on the ground, a career-high 30 carries. He also scored, and he has certainly proven uh, last year and now to start this year, he is one of the best backs in the Pac-10. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us this week, and we hope to see you next week on The Rich Brooks Show. This is The Rich Brooks Show. Featuring the Oregon Ducks.